Great panel. Dan and I were commenting to each other. We don't think we've heard the, the, the word cooperative mentioned here today so far. Maybe it's because we don't have any American farmers here. Uh, and as a former occupant of the legislative branch, I was thinking while we're emphasizing partnerships, partnerships with universities and research institutions, where did the basic re expertise come from for extension? It came from our land-grant institutions. And they're sitting there on the sidelines not being activated like they were in the 60s and early 70s. You have all that expertise that could be utilized by USDA and USAID to help these countries have a cooperative, have an extension service like Ethiopia has. So it's a, it's a tremendous asset America has and it's not being utilized in my judgment. Well, well enough commentary. I'd like to welcome the next uh, emerging solution person. That's Linda Kwamboka. She is uh, co-founder and director of M-Farm, M-Farm. So Linda, we look forward to your presentation. I was hoping that it should be more dramatic than that's the first slide that you see, but anyway, that's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's juicy, it's attractive, you can almost smell it and taste the crunch of that fruit, but it's the farmer's worst nightmare. They hate that product. Mostly because um, it's expensive to produce, it requires a lot of expertise. These farmers don't have the complete know-how of how to go about to produce such a perfect fruit. I mean, we all want to eat something that is just that perfect. Almost plucking it from the plant and eating it up. That is what we want. But the farmer cannot successfully achieve that, especially the sub-Saharan farmer. And, um, Part of the reasons why they're not able to do that is because the incomes are fluctuating for the, for the sub-Saharan farmer. Either because there's global warming issues and the rains did not come on time and he's 100% depending on the rain, or um, today Guatemala has competed very highly with um, another country, let's say Kenya, and they're able to deliver their French beans at a cheaper price to Tesco. And you know that farmer's whole production, one turn goes down the drain because he's not aware of what is going on in the market. He's, um, either he really tried to plan on time, but because the rains favored another country, let's say Guatemala, it's just fate. Where else can he take this huge production of French beans, which is not even consumed locally? Where does he take it? Um, then again, um, the farmer faces another challenge, that the demand for high value crops is on the rise every day. And another farmer, we, we just had a, uh, from the ambassador of Rwanda that a farmer made one million um, profits from rice farming. So farmers get this information and they all go and invest in one crop. <laughs> so the trend is we are all living healthy lives. We, you know, it's trendy to be healthy nowadays. So then we demand more healthy food, more vegetables, more fruits, uh, the meats and the fish and all that. And once the farmer gets that information, he invests. But once he realizes that the cost of farm inputs is very high, it is expensive to get the chemicals, every other day he's being recommended to buy different kinds of chemicals. So he, he either doesn't know how to apply them properly, there's heavy investment, upfront investment on um, high value crops. He has to get the Global GAP certification, which again is a yearly recurrent fee. So all the investments, all the efforts that the farmer has towards that perfect fruit, almost, they really seem useless. And then he, re he realizes that he needs professionals, he needs insurance, he needs, he needs a whole host of uh, activities and support to get to the next step or to make profits as a whole. So working with 20,000 farmers in the past um, years, we realized that a farmer needs a very strong network of fellow farmers. These are the same farmers who will share knowledge of, what, of proven 
uh, activities, proven information, not just theoretical, of what has worked for them and what has not worked for them. So they're the ones who will tell you, don't apply this chemical from this uh, registered company or this brand because it really doesn't work or it will um, cause um, what we call the minimum residue chemical levels, which, which are not healthy and it's cancerous and stuff like that. Then he, a farmer really needs his network so that he can collectively sell because these are small scale farmers and their quantities have to matter at the end of the day. Uh, then we have collective purchase. They want to take advantage of these discounts because farm inputs are very expensive. Then in the end, once they have sold, once they have saved a coin here and there, they need to save for the next season. So they have to come together, have a way of saving their, uh, their, um, their money or their income towards the next production. So this is what a farmer on M farm is able to do. He's able to access uh, experts using simple SMS. So they get step-by-step -step guidance on what to do at what time of um, at, at specific key uh, points in production. They're able to come together as peers, as farmers, collaborate, share knowledge, ask each other questions, and they answer themselves because farmers always trust another farmer. And we have to respect the culture, the agribusiness culture that is already existing, the systems and processes that are already existing. And I, I liked Nicholas' comment where he was talking about um, the women saving time um, so that they don't have to go to centers, the knowledge centers. A woman only has probably in sub-Saharan, in sub-Sahara, two, hour, two hours of the day where she can be able to walk around, do other things apart from taking care of the home or being in the farm from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah, so spending 30 minutes walking to the venue, 30 minutes coming back, you're in the venue, you only have another 30 minutes to walk back home, only 30 minutes to get the knowledge. It doesn't make sense. So we need to save the women that time. And using these simple SMS tools or online collaboration with other farmers is very helpful. And you realize that once the farmers are talking to each other, they will refer an expert amongst them. And this, when the experts come on board, they refer other experts, and that way, the youth who are involved in agricultural training as a background are able to use their expertise, their knowledge, to simply gain money out of, the, out of agriculture. And eventually, these farmers are rated when they transact, and they're able to access finances from transaction histories. And we've seen this with a farmer who got $3,500 from simple six two seasons of, of production, and they're able to get financing to expand their production to four acres, and eventually asset financing to get a pickup for their export commodities. So the answer from the devil that we had seen earlier is really investing in the woman. And we have been doing this for six years at MFARM. We realized if we make sure that the woman has all this knowledge, can collaborate, because it's in their nature to want to talk to each other. They want to understand what can I do to avoid the risks. So if we can be able to give them an opportunity to, to talk to each other, chat along the way, get this uh, um, ad advisory on the phone, they're able to support directly 75% of the people who are depending on agriculture in their homesteads. And they don't have to waste all this time walking up and down. And from that, because they don't own land, they can use their information. That data is collected so that they get these financial services and they can invest in other ventures or expand their ventures as farmers. So thank you so much, and I'm sorry for extending the time.